Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about Brandon Swanson, who was a 19-year-old native of Marshall, which is in Lyon County, Minnesota. He disappeared on May 14th, 2008 in Porter, Minnesota. So Brandon Swanson was the son of Annette and Brian Swanson and graduated from Marshall High School in 2007. He then decided he would attend Minnesota West Community and Technical College to study wind turbines. When classes ended for the academic year on May 13, 2008, Brandon decided to stay in Canby for a while to celebrate with his friends to mark the end of the spring semester. Brandon attended two different parties where he was seen consuming some alcoholic beverages, but his friend said he did not drink enough to make him appear visi- visibly intoxicated. Brandon left Canby before midnight for the 30-mile drive home. He called his parents just before 2 a.m. and told them he had driven his Chevrolet Lumina off the road and into a ditch. He said he was unable to get his car out of the ditch. Uninjured, he asked his parents, Annette and Brian, to come pick him up. They quickly got in their truck and drove to where they thought he was. He told them he thought he was near Lind. They stayed on the phone with Brandon the entire time, aside from the occasional drop calls. Brandon stayed with his car, flashing the lights on and off to signal his parents, but they saw nothing and he saw nothing either. After a while, Brandon kind of got frustrated and gave up and told them he was leaving his car to walk towards the city lights he could see that led him to believe he was near Lind, which was a small town about seven miles southwest of Marshall. So... Brandon told his father to just head for the parking lot of a local bar, and he'd meet him there. Brian began to drive to the parking lot, staying on the phone with his son, uh, as he did. 47 minutes into the call, right after 2.30 a.m., Brian suddenly cut himself short on the phone and yelled, Oh, shit! Immediately after, the call ended. Brian was never seen or heard from again. Brian and Annette searched the area for their son until 6.30 a.m. when they decided to call the police to report him missing. At first, police said it wasn't unusual for young men his age to stay out all night. One officer even told Annette that it was Brandon's, quote, right to be missing, end quote. Later that morning, the Lynn police finally started a search but found no trace of Brandon in the town or on the outskirts of the town. It was then they requested assistance from the office of Lyon County Sheriff Joel Dahl. Cell phone records were obtained by the sheriff's office and they revealed that Brandon had been calling from the area of Taunton, which is along State Highway 68 and is the main road to Canby, 25 miles from Lynn. So after searching that area, deputies found Brandon's abandoned car in a ditch off a gravel road along the Lincoln County line a mile north of Highway 68, bringing the office of that county sheriff, Jack Vizecki, into the investigation as well. Sheriff Vizecki told the media that Brandon's Lumina had gotten hung up on the top of an incline at the edge of the road. Not serious enough to damage the car, but enough to keep the wheels from touching the ground on that side. Nothing else was found to be amiss with the car, and due to the grass and gravel in the area surrounding it, there were no tracks and no way to tell what direction Brandon had started walking. So, after determining which tower his cell phone had used during the call, Yellow Medicine County authorities also took part in the investigation as part of it went into their jurisdiction. The call had been determined to come from within five miles of a tower at the intersection of County Routes 3 and 10 near Minota, so searchers concentrated there. Also, from that area, a red light atop a grain elevator could be seen. Maybe Brandon had confused that light for the Lind City Lights. There were ground searches, flyovers by aerial team, search dogs, and bloodhounds being used to locate any trace of Brandon. Eerily, the bloodhounds picked up a three-mile trail that mostly followed field roads to an abandoned farm, then along the Yellow Medicine River to where it seemed to enter the stream. 
Due to the fact that the water would have been up to 10 feet deep in parts that night, authorities believe Brandon may have drowned. On the call, Brandon had mentioned passing fences and hearing nearby water. Even still, Annette Swanson does not believe her son drowned that night. The dog that followed his scent to the water crossed to the other side and continued up along the riverbank to another gravel, gravel road where it continued north towards the Yellow Medicine County line and ended. She told CNN, quote, there really is nothing to indicate he's in that river, end quote. Brandon's father, Brian, also noted that his son did not sound intoxicated, disoriented, or confused during their conversation. Brandon could have intentionally disappeared, though his parents don't believe he would have done that. Vizeki said foul play couldn't be ruled out, though there's no evidence of it. He did speculate that someone could have been hiding in the shadows. It's been 12 years since Brandon disappeared. Not even his phone has been found. Sadly, the Swansons leave their porch light on every single night in the hopes their son will return home. In 2009, the Swansons worked with legislation to enact Brandon's law. It requires police to make a report whenever a person of any age is reported missing and an investigation must start immediately. If anyone has any information about Brandon or his whereabouts, please call 1-800-634-4097. Again, that's 1-800-634-4097. As always, thank you guys so much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Also, uh, leave a comment if you have anything, any suggestions or any cases that you'd like me to talk about. Um, I'm more than happy to do that. But um, you guys, be careful out there. It is a bizarre world.